Hi, hi Dr. Vida, hi Dr. Vina. Hi, Benzir. Yeah, it's been a long time. How are you? I'm doing good. Same here. How about you, Dr. Munzir? I'm good. Actually, I have a question, Doctor. Hmm, go ahead. Well, before the surgery I had just now, I was requesting for a patient consent for the blood transfusion. And... Okay, hi, Ms. Nadira. Okay, this is a consent form for the blood transfusion. You would like to sign this form first before we proceed with surgery. You would like to agree for blood transfusion in case you bleed out during the surgery. But, sorry doctor, I don't think I want blood transfusion for my operation. I want patient blood management. But Ms. Nadira, your hemoglobin is extremely low. You may bleed out and die during the surgery. Blood transfusion is the only way. This is a serious issue. You must sign this. Please consider the risk. No doctor, I want patient blood management. I, I don't understand why this patient insists for patient blood management. It's just a normal procedure to save patient's life during the surgery, isn't it? Dr. Munze, I would have done the same thing if I were her. That's right. Let me share a story that happened during our housemanship. So, many years ago, when we were preparing a patient for surgery, right before sending the patient to OT, the wrong blood was prepared. Hey, my blood is Group O. Why are you guys giving me Group B? That, fortunately, Dr. Munze, was a near miss. But imagine, what if blood Group B was given to the patient? Gosh, I don't even want to imagine. Not only that, do you know there are many other dangers to blood transfusion? Oh really, Dr. Rida? I do not know that. So what is the biggest risk of blood transfusion? Oh gosh. The biggest risk, I would say, is giving wrong blood to wrong patient, as this would trigger many unwanted side effects. Is there any other complications? There are so many. As Dr. Wilda mentioned earlier, giving wrong blood to wrong patient is probably the most important, the most severe complications. This is what we call ABO incompatibility or mismatch. So patients can have acute hemolysis, kidney failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and even succumb to this ABO incompatibility. Next, there's allergic reactions. Patients can get acute febrile reactions, which is fever, rash, itchiness. They can also suffer from anaphylactic reactions whereby the blood pressure can drop, they require adrenaline, and the list goes on. For this is followed by transfusion-related infections. You know, we have hepatitis B, C, and you know, of course, we have net testing. Having said that, there are new infections these days, the new HIV strain, COVID-19, and so on and so forth. What do you think, Dr. Virda? Oh yes, Dr. Virda. There is also trally and taco. Trally is transfusion-related acute lung injury. It is one of the major causes of death where antibodies attack the small blood vessels in the lungs. While taco, on the other hand, is transfusion-associated cardiac overload. This happens when patients develop acute heart failure due to fluid overload. We also have allo immunization. Have you heard of allo immunization, Dr. Munzin? Mm, no, I have not. This is a delayed presentation where patients develop antibodies towards transfused red cells, and this may cause hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn during pregnancy in a woman. It also may cause difficulty in getting compatible blood in the future, if really needed. I'm just wondering, is there any other silent risk of blood transfusion? Well, do you know blood is a liquid organ? And in that case, when you transfuse a patient, that can be considered an organ transplant. Studies have shown that is DNA transfer during blood transfusion. Occasionally, a woman may have a man's Y chromosome found in her blood system after a blood transfusion. It's also been shown that blood transfusion can cause immune modulation and therefore making our body defense system weak. So in that case, when do you think that you need a blood transfusion? In most cases, if we practice PBM, we will be able to prevent blood transfusion in the first place. However, transfusion is needed in the following situations. Number one, when there is a life-threatening bleed. Number two, when blood cells that are formed are abnormal or dysfunctional, such as in cases of thalassemia. And number three, when the main factory or the bone marrow is shut down. Now, Dr. Munze, do you understand why your patient was so resistant to blood transfusion? 
Yes, now I know why my patient refused blood transfusion. And now please practice patient blood management and don't transfuse your patient unnecessarily.